I came into work earlier. Came in from work earlier. I'm trying to see. Where is my damn phone? Did he even record? I had to start talking. We ain't recording shit. Okay. It says recording. Okay, then. Well, then. It says record on your side, then. Yep. Oh, my God. It has been one of them. It has been one of those days. It's like yeah. I was hitting you up mm-hmm. to, uh, well, no, nah, it begins with Spotify flagged one of my video episodes, mm-hmm. which won't showing anything. In the premium really? smoke room, the girls show, you know, they show their boobs. Wag. Mm-hmm. And it says, you know, it doesn't say no nudity. Okay. It says, it basically states that as long as you're not doing anything with sexual gratification, it's okay. Mm-hmm. But she ain't been showing tits at all. Mm-hmm. It's one of the free episodes. Mm-hmm. So I sent them an email like, why is this why did this video being taken down off of Spotify when this same video is on fucking YouTube and I sent them to YouTube link? YouTube. Yeah. So how is it that I violate y'all turn, but I ain't violate YouTube, who's way more stricter than y'all? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can't even put a, people. You can't put a porn link in YouTube. No, you would get flagged. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So then I'm hitting you up. Mm-hmm. Go to my go. Like I was doing something, and this, you know, soon as I try to go, soon as I go to Twitter, it boots me out for Twitter. Mm-hmm. Logs me out. Talking about some weekend is an issue. It's not true. This I'm sitting there like on the day that I have a interview with a lovely young sexy lady. Y'all decide y'all want to cut up today. <laughs> y'all decide y'all want to cut up today. Fuck Twitter, okay? Fuck you, Elon Musk. <laughs> Fuck you, Spotify. I don't give a damn about this bitch. So with that being said. How you doing, babe? I'm doing wonderful. I'm doing wonderful. I am ready for the new year. Like, all the new things that are be coming in, you know. Yeah, that, for all the hell I'm going through, it must be good. It must going to be a good year 2023 for me. Because, man, this has been a stressful ass week. It wasn't even expecting it. Oh, my goodness. And I see you chilling in the tub, relaxing. Yes, I'm in the tub. It's you know, probably like I got my, my little drinky drink. Oh, shit, ain't nothing wrong with that, baby girl. Shoot, hell. I <laughs> normally have a blunt to smoke, but today I I have no greenery to smoke. It's, yeah, it's that kind of a week, people. Y'all know how we do here in the Smokers Lounge. We light up as we have conversation about the porn business and everything in between, you know. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah. so, so how, has, uh, how was your Christmas? Um, quiet. It was a quiet Christmas. I be so stressed about Christmas, um, for nothing, and then Christmas comes and the shit's over. So I think, um, I kind of just chilled this Christmas. I didn't, you know, mm-hmm. work too hard. You know, I'm um, I'm coming off the of DC Exotica, so. Ooh, yes, I was seeing the pictures from it yeah. and everything. I, I I see you was um uh, was you part of the fashion show? Yes. Ah, so you met my co-host, Princess Havoc. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. As y'all know, in the Premium Smoke Room, she has her own podcast called Causing Havoc and stuff. And um, okay, yeah, I, yeah, I really enjoy, you know, watching watching the, you know, the uh the visuals from the um from the, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get my head to go. From the <laughs> see, I'm acting like I smoke, but I ain't even smoked yet. That's crazy. Boy. Um, from the fashion show, everything. So, how was it walking in the fashion show? Um, so my first fashion show was DC, was Jersey's Exotica. Okay. And um, that happened by accident because I was competing for New Jersey's Miss Exotica. Ooh, wait a second. Yeah. You weren't working the pole, was you? No, no. First of all, I had taken the edible before I hopped on stage. So I think by the time I got up there, I had lost hearing in my ear and shit. So yeah. I was just up here trying to make the best, but I had a good time. Full of energy, you know. So with Mrs. Zodica, like how did they choose who wins that? 
Um, I feel like they pretty much already know who's going to win because um, I noticed that when I come when I had applied to compete and I had to submit my, my picture, half of the people that said they were competing for Mrs. Attica, they never showed up. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's already like they already know who's going to win Mrs. Attica before. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it seems like everything from the awards to stuff like that. It's kind of somewhat, I, I hate to say rigged, but you know, rigged mm-hmm. to a certain extent or what have you. But the good thing about going to Azaka, you get to network, you get to meet people. Yeah. Um, and plus on top of that, also it gives prospective producers and male talents and female mm-hmm. talents that would like to work with you, see that you're dependable because they, sh- they show that you're willing to travel. Mm-hmm. You know, exactly. So did you do any you do any shoots during any of these articles? Um, not for Jersey, DC. Mm-hmm. I just shot um how to how to build a gingerbread with Amazon Honey and um, Ooh, I think yes, um, I saw that. Yeah. Another friend of the show. <laughs> yeah, so we um we just shot that when we was in DC. Then I just did a sh- couple of shoots, and that was really it. Um, mm-hmm. I was trying to go to the AVN next month because I really mm-hmm. want to try to get the content together, but. Yeah. I don't think I'm gonna go. Oh sh! The way that this damn web is, I don't know because it's like every time when somebody when they go to to AVNs, people mm-hmm. get stuck out there for an extra day because of the snow and the web mm-hmm. and all that shit, you know. So, but um, and I know it's gonna be lit this year because this is the first year that is actually people will attend in person because the last three years have been virtual. Yeah. And I feel like this year is actually like more people that look like me that mm-hmm. are nominated. So I was like, okay, this is definitely a vibe. Oh definitely yes, vibe. oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. So speaking about vibe, let me speak to my smokers, and then we can get this interview on the road. Okay, sexy. Hey, what's going on, people? Hello, and welcome to the Smokers Lounge here on Anchor, the perfect app for anyone trying to start their own podcast career. You know what to do? Download the Anchor app on your phone or go to anchor.fm, get a profile, start a podcast today. I'm your host, Kevin the Southern Champ, a.k.a. The Point Rap Star. Y'all know what it is. Find all my links with one link, allmylinks.com backslash Point Rap Star. Let me tell you about four wonderful sponsors that we do boast about on every episode. First one being... The Facebook of the LS community, lsworld.com. Next up, the hottest adult magazine on the web is eroticismmagazine.com. Also, black owned for your content creators, 90% profit, plus no hashtag issues, and they even offer health care. And great customer service, and also great, you know, service for if you ever have issues. And for you consumers, a new place to consume your triple H content. I'm talking about X site bunny.com so go to excitebunny.com whether you're a consumer or a content creator get yourself a profile also proud member of the black podcasting network of gw district so go over to shop gwdistrict.com and buy black as you get the opportunity to buy from over 500 black owned retailers and shops also Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, five days a week in the morning, you go over to swap rate, fully swap radio.com and listen to me live. Also, check me out on Skyhawk after dark tv.com as well as the BGP LLC app. Now, with that being said, I'm gonna step back and let this sexy, gorgeous with the fro looking all mm, 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 delicious introduce herself. Hey everyone, I am Chantel. Um, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter, ms underscore l i t p l b t. And you gotta say it right, Madame. Madame, Madame Chantel. Madame yes. Chantel. Madame. You know what I'm saying? Cause, cause, cause she's elegant with her shit. She's a lady. <laughs> I'm a lady. <laughs> so, oh my goodness. So, who all did you work with in DC? I know, I know you did the gingerbread. I Did you do any more girl shoots? Okay. Um, when I first started making adult content, most of my stuff is solo. Um, mm-hmm. I I really try to push um self pleasure. Mm. Um, so a lot of my stuff is more like romancing myself and um, you know, trying different toys. 
Um, mm. Now that I am officially like in the content creator field, I am looking to start working with people. So I'm still a virgin, technically. <laughs> <laughs> Not for the videos I saw, but go ahead. <laughs> you seem but, yeah. like you're pretty seasoned to me. <laughs> you know, I'm still a virgin. You know. So I haven't really worked with anybody um, mm. yet. So okay. I'm hoping like this year to really start working with other content creators and getting out there most definitely so what brought you into the trade um the pandemic <laughs> i think everybody got they could jump into this business because the pandemic <laughs> the pandemic um before the pandemic i worked as a dominatrix so a lot of my stuff was in person so when lockdown happened i couldn't get to my clients um, so I went on to OnlyFans and started doing OnlyFans stuff. Mm, okay. So it became more like I masturbate a lot. So I was like, well, let me make money <laughs> while Since I'm doing this. Like I masturbate lot. so much. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh my God. She she said her toys is her best friend. So fellas, you like to bring you like to bring it, you can you fuck that one. <laughs> <laughs> we got stiff competition. Literally, so Listen. so um, with your solos or what have you, um, mm -hmm. because you started filming or what have you, tell me about your first video that you put out solo wise, and how you progressed. Because I'm pretty sure you started to be a little bit more creative with your solos and all that. Mm -hmm. Um, my first clip that I put out ever, what was um. First of all, whenever my content, I always have the fire playlist. Like music and sex go hand in hand to me. So I feel like if I'm gonna fuck myself, then I gotta have the fire playlist. So I'm pretty much known for having like dope music in the background. Mm -hmm. And um, I think my first solo was um, my wand. Mm -hmm. And then I've escalated to like the sex, the fuck machine. I have one of those. Um, I'm known for trying different toys. Um, I got, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like me a good sex toy now. So, yeah. So, when you started, you know, creating content, um, how was the money at first? Slow. <laughs> slow. <laughs> it was slow. It's like, it was slow because, um, well, again, when I started, I was a dominatrix and I was also a plus size model. So, when I switched mm -hmm. to like making adult content, like, I was getting the request but people aren't really trying to pay for it you know what i'm saying like it's like you sexy as hell can i talk to you like no can you pay me before you talk to me <laughs> yeah, no um so it was like people wanted the content but they weren't willing to pay for it mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying well, well usually the way that these guys work i tell females they wait till you eat they wait till you get to a certain amount of content before they start joining um, because even, cause I, even back in my day, it took me a year to get, it took me six months to get my first sale, a year uh -huh. to get my first check uh -huh. and from talking to members who had joined my site. Uh -huh. um, they said, well, you had enough content for me to come in. And I saw that you updated regularly uh -huh. because they want to see consistent updates. Yeah. Uh -huh. They want to see persistence because people don't realize in this business, the fans respect hustle more than anything else. Yep. So, for sure. So how often do so how often do you film? Um, I have content days. So I make content every week. Once like once a week and um it's picked I do you know, a photo shoot, um, and then maybe a couple of scenes mm -hmm. and that's usually like maybe twice a week. And mm -hmm. then I just upload it slowly so like i always have stuff in the you know like that i can up upload any minute when i don't feel like it if i'm having an off week i always mm -hmm. have something in a cut you know that i can upload well, most definitely so um like when you start with, with, with yourself before we get into your boy girl stuff with your solos okay. and everything like what's some of the ideas that you came up with like role play and stuff like that, especially the fuck machine, because it's like guys love watching a girl get fucked with the fuck machine. <laughs> they do, but if you want to hear some crazy shit, I do not like 
I like clitoral stimulation. I can't, the fuck machine, it took everything. Like, I feel like that was the fakest scene I ever filmed. <laughs> like, that shit was great. Like, I had to force that shit because I'm such a, I am a clitoral, like, I like sensory. Like, that does mm-hmm. it for me. So, like, unless it's a real dick, I don't want it. So, yeah, I feel you. It was awkward. It was awkward, and it was probably funny. And I think because it was awkward, that's why it did so well. Because it was mm-hmm. like this shit is hilarious. <laughs> I, first of all, like it kept moving, so I'm like fucking, like it's fucking me, and it's like moving, and I got my foot on it, trying to like prevent it from tipping over. <laughs> no, this shit is crazy. So it, yeah, it was funny. It was funny. It was funny. So okay, so apparently your favorite toy is a vibrator. You know. Yeah. Very- and um, is that your go-to toy when you do your solos? Um, my wands. I have this a vibrator that has like a, a dolphin fin on it, and it goes mm-hmm. like that to the clip. Mm-hmm. That does it. And then I have the dual penetration that gets to G spot in the clip. Mm-hmm. That does it for me too. Um, but yeah, I am so I am solely like clitoral. I like um, if I'm playing with my clit, I do like a butt plug. Because mm-hmm. I like that feeling, but yeah. So, are it. you into anal? Oh my God. You're going to have a lot of meltdowns in your ass. <laughs> I do. So do I do. So, I do, do you do. get off on anal? Um, like you come, squirt, um, any of that? I do. I like that feeling of being stuffed. Like, mm-hmm. that's the only way I can describe it. It feels like being stuffed, and it's a really good feeling to me. I love that shit. It's amazing. Oh my God. <laughs> so, how long was it before you decided to implement Boy Girl into your repertoire? Um, I'm still like on the fence. Like, I have mm-hmm. Boy Girl content. Yeah. But the Boy Girl content is somebody like, you know, like, I know I'm like, yo, like, my sex life in itself is already so crazy that mm-hmm. I was like, I need to just record this and put it out. Um, mm-hmm. for, as far as working with male talent, it's different because I feel like when I do start working with more outside male talent, I want it to be organic. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I want it to have good, yeah, like, I want it to have good vibes. I, I watch so much porn, and it just looks so fake to me. And I want shit to feel real. Like, I want, I want the scene to feel real. I want you to have, feel, I want it to feel orgasmic just by, like, damn, mm-hmm. Her moan is crazy. Like she's enjoying that. Like, like watch how she take that dick. Like, I want all of that. I want you to get the experience. Okay, oh, yeah. you, you paying? You deserve the experience. Yeah, because chemistry is a very big part of our business. Mm-hmm. You know, um, because even on set, we the male time and the female time kind of got to woo each other. Not mm-hmm. to the point where they're gonna fuck off camera, but to create chemistry so it mm-hmm. will show on camera. What happened? Uh-huh. So, who was the male talent you was working with? Was it a boyfriend? One of your homies? No, it was a it was a boyfriend. Mm-hmm. It was a boyfriend. So, they just naturally like you know. Oh but... my goodness! <laughs> so you really was getting it in, dick, and he, you know that dick. <laughs> she know that dick. I, know I do, dick. I do, and I know it, and I'm comfortable with it, and I could be as nasty as I want. That's how I knew. I was like, all right, you are, you a nasty bitch, like. You like the <laughs> So are you still with the guy now or y'all no. okay then? That's why she read it. That's why she read the bitch out, god dang it. She was like, look, I was making some money with that boy girl country. I need some more. <laughs> I, I need some more. I now, some more. now based off of a tweet that I saw, okay, mm-hmm. because apparently you looking to work with more professional talent. Mm-hmm. Versus working with just regular content creators. What mm-hmm. made you decide to step to the professional side, which will now make you a porn star officially, versus mm-hmm. staying on that content creator side? Um, I feel like, first of all, it's hard to work with actual porn star professionals as a content creator because one, they don't they don't have any respect for us. They like, you know, <laughs> we just out here, you know doing whatever um so i feel like i want to be taken seriously in my craft and whenever i do something i don't do it half ass you know you know what i'm saying like i do a whole like i'm 10 toes i'm you know like 
Ten so, toes down. Mm -hmm. All the time. Most definitely. Well, the reason why, because me being a retired porn star, uh -huh. is because with content creators, it's a certain lack of respect that they have for the business uh -huh. and for performance in the business. Uh -huh. um, because even to the point that I always point to one content particular content creator in particular, which I don't feel like naming her right at this point in time, uh -huh. who trashes our business. Uh -huh. And the reason why she done became famous is because of the business, but uh -huh. continues to trash the people in it and the uh -huh. business itself, which kind of irks me. But that's my fans know what I'm talking about. And uh -huh. you know, I'm passionate about this shit because for 15 to 20 years, it's uh -huh. fed my family and still feeding my family to this day. Uh -huh. But and also the other reason is that many of these people don't want to take that lovely TTS, uh -huh. you know, period. Which I can understand it costs a lot, but still, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, period. Some of these mother don't want to get tested at all, you know, uh -huh. period. So that's part of the reason why they have an issue with the content creators because it devalues the business because it makes it seem like it's easy easy for us to get in when it was not. It's not easy. Uh -huh. I mean, he's about this damn business. Yeah. You know, so that's part of the reason why porn stars have an issue with content creators. Uh -huh. You know, because even to the point, I'm pretty sure you know this content creators at Exotica, at DMV, and how the porn stars reacted to them. Yeah. Yeah. And you also saw how some of them motherfuckers reacted their damn selves, and you kind of see uh -huh. why we have an issue with them. Uh -huh. Yeah. Because I'm hearing motherfuckers shoot with people untesting and shit. I'm like, what the fuck? You know, we just had a damn chlamydia outbreak in the business. Yeah. You know, and they also don't, and they also, the other thing, which I'm pretty sure that you, you, you're learning, mm -hmm. you have to curb your sex life with this because you being clean is whether or not you're going to make money. And exactly. content creators don't have to worry about that, you know, period. So, exactly. So with it's, that, it's funny uh, because I wasn't talking, sorry. No, 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 go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, what you about to say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay, I was just talking to somebody because, um, I had got invited to a play party in DC. Mm -hmm. And she said, Well, if you want to be taken seriously in the business, you can't be going to play parties. Like, you're not, like, you're not, you can't go to like that if you really want to be serious. Cause like, you can't be fucking on just anybody. Cause then you like mm -hmm. testing. And then she said, And why are you going to like fuck on somebody at a play party when you basically get paid to have sex? Like, they just watching you fuck for free. Like, that don't make sense. And I was like, Damn, like you're right. Yeah. It's, so it's like LeBron James going to play pickup basketball. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. No, facts. 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 Yeah. Facts. And see, so, to me, and, and see, that's the biggest thing because part of the reason why there's outbreaks and the most in history this year uh -huh. is because people do not act responsibly offset. Uh -huh. Because you're not, because if you come on that set dirty, one of all, first of all, the test is only as good as the last person you fucked. And then if you come on that set dirty, you're not just affecting the person you're shooting with, you're affecting the whole industry. You're affecting mm -hmm. thousands. Because mm -hmm. if one person come up dirty on that test and TTS, everybody in the industry got to get retested. Mm -hmm. Period. Quick. You know, yeah. period. So, so with that being said, now moving forward, because you're looking to work with more established male talent, what do you look for for you to say yes? I would do content trade with them. Um, I I know what I don't want. <laughs> I've had like <laughs> I've had just like some like disrespect. Like this is how you come at because at the end of it, you have to woo me. I have to be feeling you. Like I got you know like so the, I treat it as if I'm court like if I'm courting you technically mm -hmm. like you got to come at me correct. I've had. Like, oh, well, you don't have much of, or you're new, you know, like, let me, let you know, like, mm. no, 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 like, no. So, um, that's probably why I haven't shot content with <laughs> 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 Because I'm like, no, 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 um, no, it just hasn't, like, so I, like, I know what I don't want. Please come at me, you know, respectfully. Mm -hmm. Um, because at the end of the day, it is a business. But um, if I'm trying to sell you a business, like if I'm trying to sell you a product, I'm going to talk to you like I want you to, to buy the product, correct? Correct. So, the do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So learn how to talk to people. Like, come on. You know? Yeah. So. Because how they pose a step to you is, one, 
they're supposed to show you their work. Mm-hmm. You know, I tell females, iron sharpens iron. The more professional male talent it is, the better that scene going to work. Because mm-hmm. working in front of that camera with a cameraman mm-hmm. is totally different than we sitting here putting on a tripod mm-hmm. or using POV. Because yeah. that cameraman is in your face. Mm-hmm. And for a dude, it's difficult. Women, y'all ain't got to worry about it. The only I got to worry about is monthly. <laughs> <laughs> with us, we got to worry about getting it hard in extreme conditions. Mm-hmm. And and I'm pretty sure Amazon Honey probably told you. Mm-hmm. No air conditioning because the mic is so strong. The mm-hmm. air conditioning will dry out your morning. Mm-hmm. Um, lights. Cameraman is in your face. You know, mm-hmm. period. Um, I done had a situation where the cameraman is literally up against my ass behind me with the camera <laughs> around me like this. To uh-huh. get that POV look for the doggy style. And I can feel his dick press against my ass as I'm fucking. I gotta stay hard. You know? So it's kind of like you want male talents that have stood the test of time with that. Mm-hmm. Versus when you deal with content creators, they don't have that experience. Mm-hmm. You know, period. Because it's when I know you had a lot of dudes that probably looked at your video talking about, I can fuck you better than him. No, you can't, dog. You could probably couldn't even get it up, keep it up, or you, you wouldn't even show up if you had the opportunity to film, so. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what it comes down to. So, shoot, so, um, so, with that being said, because, of course, porn has to, well, actually, more importantly, you're a dominatrix. So, do you plan to implement some of your dominatrix into your repertoire which you're filming also? Um, I do. I do. Um, it's, it's really just finding <laughs> willing, you know, people who are willing to, to do it because my, when, as a dominatrix, besides like body worship and all that other stuff, um, pegging, like that was my thing. Like, I'll I keep running into Peg Bundy's. God damn. <laughs> Big dick energy across the board, but go ahead. Yeah, no, pegging is a thing. So a lot of my clients enjoy pegging. So um, it's just like, and I, <laughs> when I was putting stuff on OnlyFans and asking people like, well, this is what I do. And they're like, ah, no, you're not about to peg me. Like, nah, nah, nah. It's like, good. I mean, I ain't gonna front shots out to Giselle Lane because she got plenty of footage of a dude getting fucked in the ass. I tell you that much. <laughs> That's why you didn't meet her in New Jersey. I did. I I did. I met her in Jersey and in DC. Yeah, that is my girl. Her, yeah, her, yeah. Diosha. Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, period. And it was funny. They they told me that she told me about a a pet gang bang. I said, what? There's a such thing. <laughs> That's wow. the same thing, and it was too. I saw some of the footage. Yeah, they would tear that dude ass up. <laughs> I broke a strap in some dude's ass. That shit was crazy. Yeah. Okay, hold on, hold on. You got to break that down. Tell us the story on that one. I got to hear this story. How you break the strap on in his ass? <laughs> That's a hard I ass. Don't like- I, I wish I could explain, like, I had him spread ego, and I'm fucking, and, like, I, he was, like, harder, and I was, like, I'm, go, I'm fucking him harder, and then that shit just, it broke. I don't, like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know, but mm-hmm. I was, like, he took, like, I was, like, he's, like, you good, bitch. You took that dick so well. Aren't you just a good boy? <laughs> <laughs> you sound like, like my girl, no, the queen. good boy. <laughs> Rubbing his head and shit. Uh-huh. Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because actually, um, that's a niche is very lucrative in video as well. Mm-hmm. You know, period. Um, because of course, BDSM is a money maker. Because even with me and being the dom myself, I had slut training videos different type of videos, age play and all that shit with, you know, with the dominatrix and slave mm-hmm. type situation. And they always so well for me. So, mm-hmm. and also with um, your your meet your meetups with your, your submissives mm-hmm. or what have you. How often do you do that? And how do your submissives find you? Um, most of my submissives find me on FetLife. 
Mm -hmm. I'm very active on there. Every now and then I get somebody in my DM on Instagram, but I don't take the Instagram DM seriously. You know, I, I just don't. Most of the time it's on Twitter, maybe, or FetLife. Um, I have a session twice a month. I have a regular that um, when I when I get to his place, he's dressed in, you know, lingerie. My drink is ready for me. He's waiting at the door on his knees. Um, yeah. You know, do the whole thing. <laughs> he's in see, 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 people, she's official female <laughs> dom. <laughs> All that bullshit y'all be saying, you ladies be talking about I'm a dump, y'all don't even know what the fuck it means. That's dumb shit right there, goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> because you see a lot of girls screaming, I'm a dominatrix, I'm a fin dom, a financial dom, mm -hmm. or what have you. And a lot of them don't even understand the dynamic of it, the energy exchange, the power exchange, or none of that. Uh -huh. You know, period. So speak to the power exchange of being a female dom. Uh -huh. oh, speak to it. Well, um, being a, 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 a dom and like the other side of me, because <laughs> I tend to be very submissive, but dominant, so I'm a switch. Mm -hmm. um, but I enjoy my dominant side. And most of my clients are like white men. So like when I say, yeah, like when I say I'm your boss's favorite, I am your boss's favorite, okay? Like, <laughs> I'm talking Wall Street. Like, I'm talking, like, you know, like, so um, I have these white men who have all this power worshiping me. Like, that shit is the greatest high ever. You know what I'm saying? Like, black, uh, I'm black excellence. Yes, yes, bow down, yes. Make my drink, bitch. Like, rub my feet. Like, yes, <laughs> yes. Yes, I love it. I love it. I love it. So, so tell me about your first dominatrix experience. <laughs> um, my first experience, I was nervous as hell. Um, because when I started, <laughs> when I started, I um, it was at a party. It was just like, it was like a bachelor party, I guess. And I, how I got booked for the event was the guy was like, you look like you can offer like this amazing experience. And at the time I was only doing pleasure parties and workshops. Like I was doing how to suck dick, like all that stuff, how to eat pussy. I was teaching people how to do that. So he was like, but that's not what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, what are you looking for? So he was like, yeah, like these are NYPD, like white NYPD officers. Like, can you come through? So I was like, NYPD, that's a player club. Let me walk yeah. over here. Like, all oh, you white motherfuckers, no eyes on me. <laughs> People don't realize how many cops are tricks. A lot of cops are tricks now. Let's keep it 100 now. I ain't going to lie. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I pulled in there like that, and, and they... It, that was how that one went and then after that i really like studied and like um did workshops and read books and just you know like wanted to work with people like paying and that's another thing like if you want to learn something pay people for their knowledge pay people yeah. for their time yeah. you know what i'm saying oh so, well, yeah because yeah, um the game is to be sold not told exactly you know that's right exactly so exactly. um so with that being said People, we didn't get to that part of the show that y'all love. Where the pussies go dry and the dicks go limp. Let's talk about the business. <laughs> now, everyone that comes to this game, they think this is easy. You make money out the jump. They don't realize the work behind the scenes. The easy part yeah. is us. It you is. Know, Speak to how much time you put into the promotion, the social media, and all the things to get the shit sold and get it out there. This is a job. Like, I like not for nothing, I have a regular nine to five job, and it's like working two jobs literally, it's two jobs. Um, it's hours of content. Like, when I say I have content days, I have to schedule the days, and that's hours. Like, I'm spending hours preparing stuff hours like putting stuff together making sure that the, the videos are clear because there's times like i've shot shit and then 
watched it back and I was like, this looks like shit. Now I got to do it all over again. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's not, it's the, it's not an easy, like sex work is, is a job. It's a fucking yeah. job. Like it's, we not out here just making money. Like, cause people really think we just, for, oh, you fucking and making money. Like, oh, that's easy. No, 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 no. Cause I'm going to tell what people forget. This is a customer service sales business. Exactly. It's like McDonald's don't see a billion every day. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Exactly. A salesman don't see a a high rate of sales every day. Exactly. One, but, yeah, one but it's good, one but it ain't. And it's exactly. kind of like, why do you think people automatically assume? Is it because of the people that they're watching? Or is it because they think because we just fucking that it's easy money? One, we just fucking and it's easy money. Two is it's hard to find people really talking about the hustle. Like, you know, like when I first started, um, it was like people was all oh, making money, it's easy to look, look at all the money I made. But no, like, what about the days you're not making anything? Um, I was I had night flirt for a while. There was days I'd be on night flirt, night flirt for hours and not make anything. Mm-hmm. You understand? Then it was days, and then with night flirt, you got a night flirt, you have to pay into it. So I'm paying into it and not making that money back. You understand what I'm saying? Like, no, you have good days and bad days. And I think with um experiencing those bad days, I've learned that when the money is good, I always put something to the side. Yeah. Always put something to the side because it's not always gonna be money coming in like crazy. It's just it's oh no, oh no. Because even when we when we were hearing about the ladies making six figures, mm-hmm. they're talking about one month. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because that was all that, that all the only fans broadcast. Yeah, she made a million. That was one month. Let's talk about mm-hmm. six months later. She's still seeing that. Mm-hmm. Because if people notice only fans died down a little bit. You've seen a lot of girls disappear. Yeah. They figure it out. It ain't that easy. It's way hard. It takes a lot of work and dedication. It does. And, and consistency. You got to be consistent. Yeah. And two, also, I hear you already understand expanding my repertoire because there's a lot of different ways to make money within the porn trade mm-hmm. it doesn't involve content so you're not how can i put it you're not dependent upon content you know mm-hmm. speak to ladies expanding their repertoire into goods and into services you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying so just webcam the, the custom videos the night flirts the sex pamphlets and stuff like that um <laughs> finding your niche is is top tier like and it took me a while to find what I was good at because originally I thought I was doing Dom and it was like no well somebody I had a, a customer tell me like you're giving like a hot wife at home like lonely hot wife so that became my thing because it was like I love the way you wear lingerie like I wish my wife would wear stuff like that so then I would do like home wrecker stuff you know so it's just like listening to your, your your clients, your customers, because they're telling you what you want and then using that to like <laughs> spread out. Yeah. Like don't put all your, your eggs in one basket. Don't do it, you know? Yeah, because a lot of girls get comfortable with just doing the content and there's webcamming out there. Mm-hmm. And as well as even fetish, you know? Because mm-hmm. sometimes you can actually see a client and it ain't got nothing to do with fucking, it's fetish. You know, mm-hmm. so it's kind of like with you, you already uh, it, it was like you was already doing shit. You just mm-hmm. added content to what you was doing. Doing exactly, exactly. And honestly, it came out of necessity because mm-hmm. when we couldn't go anywhere, then <laughs> I yeah. had to figure something else out. I was like, all right, well, this isn't gonna work. And honestly, like I made it work for me. It, I did. It wasn't easy, but. I had nothing but time on my hands. We were all in the house. <laughs> you ain't never lie. Right? I'm surprised you didn't get a lot of dudes trying to work with you, especially the established time when you went to the Exoticas. Because you yeah. know, at Exoticas, sometimes you got mm-hmm. you might bump into somebody and he might have a cancellation in a spot and he see you be like, yo, you know, this, that, and the third. So did you get, you know, hit up on by some of the top talent? I did. I did. Um my like Jersey was my first exotica and I wasn't trying to like 
I wanted the experience. I wanted, like, I was there. I When I pulled up to Exotica in Jersey, I was business. It was like, all right, I want to network. I want to see who's doing what, how everybody's moving, um, how to advertise myself better. Because, again, I'm the product. How do I put myself out there in the best way possible? Um, so... I wasn't I wasn't trying to like make content the first time. The second time I was like maybe, but no. <laughs> I had a couple of uh, times. Oh, yeah, you up, go yeah. to Saga, Chicago. Your ass gonna be shooting like a motherfucker. I already oh, hell yeah. I, I they they just reached out to me like you coming to Chicago. I said, you know I am and I'm already like I'm Chicago and I heard Chicago is huge. So yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, I'm ready. First time I'm good here too. Yeah, so it's it actually set. It actually, to me, it sets the year. Okay. Every year, I don't say it sets the year. It's more of a, the award. It's more about the awards and, mm -hmm. and, and, and the convention. But the Exotica is where everybody get their shit off the most. You know, mm -hmm. every year is more for mainstream. Exotica for everybody. Everybody. Yeah. You know, yeah. So shoot. So, so, so we already know you're going to Exotica, Chicago. You're gonna go to Miami. I'll be in Miami. I'm going to all three. All oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! My oh, my shit. goal, my goal is I eventually like want to be nominated for AVN. Eventually, mm. like that's like it's that's, the possibility is getting there. Because like, I, um, I've been looking, I've been studying, like I've been trying to see what what you know what's going on what's popular and what's the, the um categories and i'm like all right all right like i don't want to just be bbw and even the bbw i was like <laughs> i was like okay you know yeah. like i love me some dallas like dallas playhouse yes that's another friend of the show that's my buddy I Shout out to her. Dallas, <laughs> if you're watching this, girl. Yeah, <laughs> 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 this girl. She heard the camera got this. You see, this motherfucker be like, I remember you, you, you said something about me on this show. Dallas, but see, Dallas, yeah. the game is opening up for BBWs. Now they're mm -hmm. brass. You shoot it. Because they shot three, I know more to come. And the, and the way the industry works, they're copycats. So if brass. Mm -hmm. Seeing the money that BBWs and the Travel Day generates, other companies going to follow suit. I'm pretty sure that coming in 2023. So mm -hmm. you actually walking in the game at the perfect time. Because mm -hmm. I remember it was a time where it was at least 10 to 20 companies just in Hollywood that shot BBWs. And mm -hmm. then the internet took over, it kind of thinned the herd, you know, because mm -hmm. they, 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 they couldn't switch over to internet. Yeah. You know? So because it's all about DVDs. Mm -hmm. So, and I can tell everybody, BBWs make the most money in this business. Stop playing. <laughs> they make the most waves and the most, uh, uh, the most noise, what have you. Especially mm -hmm. the black BBWs. You know, period. Because I think when interracial became the shit, they kind of got lost in the shuffle. Mm -hmm. Now, the resurgence of black porn. Black mm -hmm. on black. I'm even seeing a re seeing the emergence of black BDSM, black on black BDSM. Yep. Which is beautiful and everything and stuff. Do you do you do you have any black submissives? No. No, I don't. Um I don't. Um I would love to, but I think for, for I feel like for black men, mm -hmm. if I would have to be more sensual. It would have to be more sensual domination. Like mm -hmm. I couldn't, like I couldn't. You can whoop yeah. a white man's ass, black. <laughs> yeah. Like I can't, like I can't, I can't, I can't. I just, I've had, I've had black men um, ask me for sessions. And most of them, that actual sessions is always like ass worship and you know, yeah. stuff like that. Um, the ones that ask for more physical, I can't do it. It's mentally, it just does something to me, and I can't. I, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I can't do it <laughs> yet. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I ain't gonna front. It's, it's kind of like I can't, I can't beat up my brother, <laughs> but I can. Yeah, fuck like him. yeah, like, like I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, because I had a white baby that wanted me to shit on him. I said, beautiful. 
I can't do that to another black man. But I can do that to a white man all day. I shit all on your motherfucking ass. Got that out that bitch. To the bank out this bitch. So, um, now, as you start doing the boy girl, are you are you into gang bangs? We know you do anal. Um, you looking at the DP because you know the, the more a girl does sexually in her mm-hmm. repertoire, mm-hmm. the more she might get booked. So, are it, it are you into gang bangs? For interesting, I've never no, I've not, I probably, but I've never had a gang bang. I've mm-hmm. definitely had threesomes in my life, um, and that's been fun. <laughs> Pretty sure you look like you a whole lot of fun, got that. You probably had both of them dudes. I, 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 I loved it. I loved it. The, like, it's the attention. Like, I don't care what nobody say. That shit was amazing. Like, yes. It was great. Like, it was great. Um, I've never had a gangbang. I don't know if I would. Honestly, I don't know. It, it takes a lot. If you catch me on the right day. It's mentally strong to do a gangbang. Because yeah, yeah. Because that's a lot of dick. It's a that's lot, a lot of, of dicks. And if you're doing a porn game, bang, that's a lot of big dicks. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It's shit. It is. I ain't, I ain't seen any female had to do a one a, a game bang with Brickzilla, <laughs> Shane Diesel, <laughs> and Richard Mann. <laughs> God bless. God damn, that's a lot of dick. <laughs> Oh my God! So, are you looking to do any content houses? You know, because they, they've been popping up real hard lately. Yeah, um, definitely. Um, but again, I'm just really like careful who I work with. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. um, now that I'm like kind of like trying to get the porn hub stuff together, I've been getting people say, "Well, you collab," and I'm like, "Ugh!" <laughs> like I, you know, like I'm just skeevy. Well, there's nothing know. wrong with that. Because part of your brand is the motherfucking you fuck, and I tell girls yeah. that. Yeah. You know, and they look at that. Not only did the fans look at, but also companies and other mm-hmm. established talent. You know, period. And all it takes for you to shoot with one good established talent, your name is yeah. Bad. You don't mm-hmm. take much. You know, period. And um, that's why I tell females as your career grows, who you mm-hmm. shoot with shrinks. Mm-hmm. And how many do you shoot with shrinks? Mm-hmm. You know, because, like I said, iron sharpens iron. And what girls don't get, which is funny that Miss Shorty don't get, but she just happened to be lucky because she got the social media presence. Mm-hmm. You shoot with these male talents because they have a broad fan base, like you or mm-hmm. you. So you mm-hmm. be interested. Same reason why a lot of girls say, I would never shoot with the Brazzers. You a dumb motherfucker if you don't. First of all, that's a paid shoot. Ain't not many motherfuckers go on Brazzers. More than anyone go on your OnlyFans. I don't give a damn if you got 12K mm-hmm. followers. Yeah. <laughs> Them motherfuckers worldwide, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Or even Plumper Pass, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It's kind of like, um, and, and you know, BBW Highway, he, he done built his name up. You know, mm-hmm. shots out, shots out to Ken and everything. But yeah, but um, with you, like with your content house, it, it with your thought process, how would you pick which content house you want to go to? Is it the town um, there or the, the producers' location? It would, be, it would uh, definitely producers because um, I'd want to see like their work, and then the the people who are there, the content creators who are there. Like I would, I would need. You're, I would need to know who you worked with before. Like, let me see, you know, like your work prior. Let me see what you've done. Do you have a, a catalog? Which is crazy because I'm not like, I have a crazy catalog with anybody because it's just me. But still, you know what I'm saying? Like, because it's still my pussy. And, like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. I, I got you. And, and, like, I feel like right now I'm not really working with anybody like that. So when I start working, not not saying that it, the value go down a little bit, but <laughs> it kind of do. Yeah, it actually does. <laughs> because once yeah, you start working with established talent, exactly. Working yeah, with yeah, a content yeah. creator is like you've been fucked with ballers. Now you're dealing with a nigga at Walmart. You you exactly. don't have some back. You know exactly. What I'm saying? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So um, I already got some manifestation already. I, I'm just gonna say this right now. Holler at my man, Mr. Nuts, for his okay. houses, as well as Richard Mann, Mr. Mysterious. If you're in the Northeast, 
college, my man shoot her. That's okay. what it is. My man, my mentor, tribe chat podcast. I'm talking about Amari the Rebel. Okay. Yeah, holler at them. Holler at them. They, they good. Okay. Guys. Thank you. I'm in the business of connecting people because I got to live by curious through y'all because I'm retired. I can't fuck y'all no more. So. <laughs> you might have to pull you out of retirement. See, I don't be saying that, but like I said before, I don't feel like paying with that TTS, goddammit. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm let you take the health department. <laughs> Damn it. Cause that shit costs, goddammit. This mm-hmm. shit. Cause that's one feeling that, that you hate to have. You can pay for that TGS or somebody flake. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> and now they come up with you had to they, they take that bitch twice a month, what have you, you know. Mm-hmm. And this game is totally changed from when I came in 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. Totally yeah, I, I came in when DVDs were still prevalent. Oh, wow, okay. You know, very, trust me, I hate that when wake. That's 75% of the money. I was making good money with them DVDs. <laughs> so I hear you talk about other platforms. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure you got only fans at point. What other platforms do you have? Um, I just um started mini vids. Um, I've only fans. I'm a Pornhub model, and that was it right now. <laughs> like. I'm going into the new year trying to find the different sites, the different people to work with. Like, I'm so new to it, and I'm really just trying to make it make sense. <laughs> you know, like... Yeah, I'm going to give you some sense to make right here. There's potential. I see potential. See, whenever I interview somebody new, for all you people that's listening, it's a reason why I get Because nine times out of ten, watch a year from now. She's going to be a big star. Y'all going to be like, Bob found her. See, because I truly believe some of you motherfuckers be listening to my podcast because it's mighty fucking funny that a lot of brass girls that I didn't interview, brass is done shot. So I wonder. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I wonder. Because <laughs> it's mighty fucking funny that Dallas Playhouse got was shot with brass around that interview the ass. I said, really? <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying they, they might be listening, they might not. I don't know, but it wouldn't surprise me, you know, period. Mm-hmm. So, so what's the biggest misconception that people get about you, your fans get about you? Um, I don't know. That's because I tend to be very, like an open book. I don't, mm-hmm. you know, like, I don't sugarcoat shit, like, the way I am. On online, that's how I am. The shit that I say, that's really what I, you know. Um, I feel like people don't respect my time. I think that's the only thing. Like I have, like I'm just sitting here answering emails all day. Like I know I have a life. Like I got responsibilities. Like, um, yeah, that's people who demand your time. They just think that they're entitled. So, um, like I'm not. I feel like the biggest misconception is that I'm not human. I'm just here for your pleasure. Yeah, because I think that's the one thing about this day and era, this, in, 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 this day, mm-hmm. the time. It's more information about the porn business between the spaces, podcasts. I'm seeing a lot of porn stars starting podcasts. Mm-hmm. Talking about the business. Shouts out to my girl Paisley Hayes, doing mm-hmm. photography. You know, um, I even saw my man Ty Lit. He has a YouTube page. He's talking about porn or whatever. Mm-hmm. And that wasn't there when I came in. So it mm-hmm. was basically trial and error almost. Mm-hmm. And even though we still had to reach out to people to somewhat ask questions and learn, but mm-hmm. they got to, y'all had to reach out to so much, y'all can just sit in on a space. You know? Mm-hmm. Have you speak to how much people open open to talking about it more now than helped you? Um with the yeah, there with the all the podcasts. First of all, the we're in the the era of podcasts. You can find a podcast about the rain. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. these podcasts are like popping up left and right. So the fact that um there are podcasts who people who are in the industry, it's I've learned so much from Paisley. Like I was on Paisley and I actually watch her YouTube and she's talked about camming and different things. So to see that um and she's giving, like, she's giving the information. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. it's, and she's sharing her real life, kind of, like, the thing she goes to, where she, what she's thinking about, how she feels that day. 
a humanizing adult content creators yeah. because people really think we just I'm, I'm just here for your pleasure i'm just here for whatever and i have like i don't have bad days like some days you know like they don't <laughs> they don't get it so it humanizes us i think yeah actually because you don't realize we have jobs we have families mm -hmm. I'm married you know period that's why i tell dudes don't be thirsty on set because she might have a whole husband at home Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have a whole husband at home, motherfucker. You <laughs> want to fuck your ass on camera. That, just be happy for that shit. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. my goodness. So I done held you up, but yeah, I'm more wrinkly now. <laughs> I'm like, damn. Wrinkly and sexy to me. What you talking about with that fro? I'm loving it, loving Thank it. You. So with that being said, y'all know what I do every time at the end of these shows, baby girl. You know I got yes. to bring you back, right? Yes, so, please do. Can I call you a smoke buddy? Yes. See, there you go, people. You heard it first. She will be back here on the Smokers Lounge, and we're going to bring her on the Premium Smoke Room. That's right. Four ninety nine a month, seven premium podcasts. It gets wilder. It gets more unpredicted predictable it gets more uncensored she might flash something she might show a little booty you don't know unless you subscribe the best smoke is premium smoke so with that being said sexy tell everybody where they can spend their good hard-earned money on you all my links are on my social media it's ms underscore l-i-t-t-l-e-z there you go. So with that being said, you know how we end these things all day, every day. Life is a learning experience. What's the point of the experience if you haven't learned anything? Smoke this over. Say goodbye to the smokers, baby. Bye.